Welcome back. I have to say this segment is so close to my heart and so special and I'm just going to bring you guys in and introduce you to our guests, Beignet and Phoenix <laughs> and their trainers, of course, <laughs> Angela and Mindy from CCI, which is Canine Companions for Independence. We are so grateful to have you here today. Thank you for having us. This is amazing. First of all, the fact that they're just sitting quietly, peacefully. <laughs> I couldn't love them anymore. Um, Look at this intense gaze of love. Right? Right there must here. be a cookie. <laughs> There's a you cookie in my view in her future. For the trainer. <laughs> there is a cookie in her future. I'm pretty sure it's not about the trainer. <laughs> but ladies, CCI does amazing work, and we yes. really wanted to bring you on so that we could share that with our viewers and with the community because I think most people are familiar with guide dogs or guide dogs for the blind mm -hmm. but CCI dogs do something completely different so please tell us about that. Well Canine Companions for Independence we provide assistance dogs to people with physical and cognitive disabilities anything other than blindness okay. and we provide the dogs for free. Oh that's wow. tremendous. It's an amazing yeah. organization. What a service. And so these are the dogs that I've read about that will open the refrigerator, take out the food, help, help someone take their socks off, help someone zip their zipper. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I mean, what's their process? These guys are, what did you say? She's 14 months and she's 11 months. They're babies and then they're going to grow up to be these amazing service dogs. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a lot of training. Mm -hmm. it's, they're almost about three years old by the time they graduate. Okay. So um, the first two years that they're with puppy raisers, that's what we are, right. they learn about 30 different commands. And then from there, they go into professional training for another six to nine months, sometimes longer mm -hmm. even. And that's where they learn to build upon all of the commands that we've taught them. Okay. And they, that's where they apply it to opening the doors and pushing cupboards, pulling somebody in a wheelchair, picking up dropped items. Do they know at that time who their person will be? Do they know exactly how to train them for their person? Or this is just a broad scope training that they all get? Yeah, it's kind of a broad scope, but they do focus on the dog's strengths and that helps them to decide who they'll be partnered with. That's very interesting because when, when you think of training a puppy, I have a puppy, I'm a terrible trainer, so <laughs> don't you, <laughs> now you don't might have some people. I'm, I'm actually looking for some cues. I'm like, hey, we barely got a potty trained, he's like a year and a half. But, um, but, and we love, love, love our dog. But, but that's interesting to me that there are like different strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. for each dog. And so how do you, how can you tell and how do you know which would be good for which type of, of person? Well, fortunately, we don't have to make that decision, right. <laughs> but we do submit monthly reports through the duration of raising the dogs. And in those reports, we, we note things that they do really well mm -hmm. or things that they need a little extra assistance with or maybe something that they don't like. And so they factor all of that in once they go in for professional training. Interesting. And so put it, all um, the pieces together. Is there anything that Beignet doesn't like? a good question. She seems like she likes everything. <laughs> she seems pretty yeah, agreeable. She right? does. Loves she does. Love. As long as she can be with somebody uh -huh. that needs cuddles and comfort, mm. Beignet will be amazing. And how is that. Phoenix then different? And they're actually related. So yeah. mm -hmm. aunt and, and niece. niece. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And it's funny to see how their personalities are very different. They're almost on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Really? Wow. Yeah, where Beignet loves everyone. Mm -hmm. She'll anybody she will go to them and love them and give and you can feel the love coming from her where Phoenix is more she's engaged with her environment but she's very just a kind of a one handler person mm -hmm. and she can she transitions really well okay. because as you know we trade puppies sure so she transitions to her new handler well but she's really not interested in you know serving a lot of people she's more kind of a one a one-person girl. So you would think maybe yeah. that Beignet would be the dog that goes to the hospital and goes from room to room with the kids or, or I actually that kind envision of a dog? her being what's called a facility dog. Mm -hmm. And facility dogs can work in a number of different areas. 
Uh, they can work in a physical therapy office. They can work in speech therapy in a oh, school. Wow. They can work in Don't. the courthouses. Um, where they would go up on the stand with children that have been oh. victims of traumatic mm -hmm. crimes mm -hmm. and they just comfort them and keep them calm and that's a, a gift that she a oh. natural gift that she has to just love yeah. and comfort every single person she meets mm -hmm. um, Phoenix on the other hand she is so aware of her environment Girl. and and in tune with her handler that I see her being a hearing dog. Mm, she would alert well. the person yeah. to the, you know, the fire alarm mm -hmm. going off, or maybe someone ringing the doorbell. Mm. And um, so, so she again, would live with one strengths. person. Yeah. But I just look at her and I look at like the intense mm -hmm. gaze, yeah. like she that. She, she's focused. like, she's like, she I is. am, an, I am an A plus Good student, girl. and <laughs> I am doing, you know, <laughs> what do you need me to do next? I am yeah. Yeah. Right. Give me a you know? job. And, and she, she seems more like she's like. It's all good, man. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, so yeah. just love each other. Yeah, she's a hippie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, that's what it seems like. That's what yeah. like yeah. Laid back, laid back and having fun. Them. It's true. So, yeah. Can we talk for a minute about service dogs in general? Because there is so much going on in the media and in communication right now about therapy dogs, service dogs, falsifying service dumb. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talked a minute ago about how I could go out and get certified as a minister in 30 minutes online, mm -hmm. and, and any dog could pretty much get certified as a service dog. But what is a true service dog? So the Americans with Disabilities Act says the service dog is a dog that is trained with specific tasks to serve one person to mitigate their disability. Mm -hmm. So that's why you'll see, pe when you see people with service dogs in public, the dog is really there to do a job to mitigate that person's disability by opening doors for them, by closing, uh, by turning a light off or on. Mm -hmm. Some people, um, you know, if you're confined to a wheelchair, sometimes you don't really have, hey, don't range of motion so these dogs you can give them your money your credit card and they can actually go up on the counter and, and pay for your item and retrieve the change oh, wow. um, if you're in a wheelchair and you drop something you can't bend over and get it they retrieve that item for you and I know it's really difficult for you know the general public if you don't have any experience with someone confined to a wheelchair mm -hmm. someone's with a balance issue and not all disabilities are are visible right. either right. so it's hard to understand why you know, why do you really need that dog? But they, it, it, the dog is supposed to mitigate your disability mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. I understand. Now there's a, an emotional um, component to this as well, right? Mm -hmm. So there are people who um, do it to, like they have a service dog for their anxiety, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah. Okay, so it could be, it doesn't have to be a physical disability. Yeah, not emotional. all disabilities for sure. I mean, many disabilities emotional. are not, mm -hmm. yeah, are okay. not visible. And like Angela said, cognitive, we have a lot of children that are served by these dogs mm -hmm. with autism. Mm -hmm. And we've had families say, we, we got to the point where we couldn't even leave the house. And once we got our dog, all of a sudden their child felt that security and it, they were able to gain more independence mm -hmm. as a family mm -hmm. because they could leave the house again. Oh, that's wonderful. And for disabled kids, it really bridges that gap in society. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, we all, all humans do it. We see something that's a little different and we don't really want to approach that. We just want to kind of shy away from mm -hmm. it. Where if they have a dog, mm -hmm. kids are coming up to say, oh, yeah. who is your dog? And now that child can engage with other children and engage in the that's world in a way that they couldn't before. Well, you know, I actually feel like on the on the other side, I, I've been in that situation before where there's someone with a with a disability, and I want to reach out, but mm -hmm. I'm like, how do I? I don't even know yeah, how to bridge like that gap. Yeah, it's like super awkward. Yeah, I don't want it to be awkward. I don't want them to feel awkward. Mm -hmm. and, and then, but with if you have an animal there, oh, what a beautiful dog, and it opens mm -hmm. the door to have more you know authentic yeah. conversations. Yeah. So that's yeah. a great great point. Do you find that people are more aware now to not just automatically go up and pet a dog or approach a service dog <laughs> as no. a pet? No. <laughs> no, there's no it's more like awareness. It's a pregnant woman, right? right? Yes. Everybody thinks yes. they can touch the belly, yeah. right? It's, yes. it's crazy. It's exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we get... Um, we get a lot of contact with the public and we do have, you know, we're very polite, but mm -hmm. we let them know, please know they're working mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we'll give them a command, um, like a shake command, for example. Mm -hmm. So then the person can interact with the dog, mm -hmm. but on a very minimal level so that mm -hmm. they're not- With permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't want the dogs to start expecting attention from everybody right. they meet in public. We want them mm -hmm. to stay focused on the handler. I see. And is it always labs and goldens? Because I see sometimes chocolate or, I mean, 
the labs and Goldens of all colors, well, Goldens are always golden, but, but the labs <laughs> I see doing service of any color, but now there are also different breeds that are being used for different services, so. Yeah. In our organization, uh, we only use Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, or a cross of the two. Mm -hmm. Is it because of their trainability? It's their trainability, it's their work ethic, it's mm. their, com their empathy, mm. their uh, willingness to learn, mm. they're eager to please, they're intelligent, they have um, amazing health, great temperaments. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you kind of the tell. whole package. The whole package yeah. And they're cuddly. They <laughs> and are they're the cuddly. They're the kind of guy they they you want to date. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for our viewers, um, because again, it was the whole idea is to really just share that you guys exist. And from the puppy handling onto the graduate training and onto the transitioning, um, if someone thinks they might qualify or be in need of a service dog, how would they get more information through CCI? Um, they can go to our website, which is cci.org, and there's a really quick little application there to get the process started. Okay. There's so much information on the website as well that they can um, even go through a questionnaire and determine if one of our canine companions would be appropriate for them or um, you know, just to make sure that they're at a point in their life where they're ready to do That's this. Right. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up, can we get them to do something fancy? Because now that we finally got <laughs> her to lay down, she was all about the, yeah, the cookies and the she treats. Yeah, she wants to look around. But I understand that Beignet has some sofa skills. Oh yeah. She Everybody. has some sofa and TV That's watching nice. skills. Beignet up. Okay. Good. So this up command is the, up. the command that we up. teach them. So eventually, if they need to pay for an item, Beignet. And we start small, don't, uh -huh. and then eventually, yes. you know, get to a taller and taller and taller, Girl. you know, mm. object. Okay. So they can As get in there, go up awesome. there, grab mm -hmm. the money, Good yeah. change, Good come down. and bring it or to the, their. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Off. Very so cool. it's not intended for her to be on the furniture, for them yeah. to be on the furniture. It's intended mm -hmm. for them to be able to use mm -hmm. the up command for an actual yeah. service. Exactly. That's very. Cool. Everything it's a that useful we teach them carries over and it's built upon. And so mm -hmm. what would Phoenix do that would impress us so wildly? So one of the things, <laughs> besides one of being the things, phenomenally yes, adorable. She is really cute. <laughs> she she's is just pretty, she's she just, is, she's just but cute. she's not just a pretty face. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Um, so one of the things with uh, people that are, might be confined to a wheelchair or have balance uh, mobility issues, if they were to fall and they could not, and they don't have a phone, you know, they don't have any way to communicate, the dogs are taught, don't, they want to play. Yeah. In professional training, to, to, we tell them, we teach them a speak command, oh. and they continue to bark until they ask them to be quiet. Oh my. So the people can let their neighbors know, hey, if you hear my dog barking, you know, these dogs don't bark. They're not allowed to bark mm. unless they're asked to bark. So mm. if they're not, if you have a neighbor with a CCI dog and the dog is barking, you need to go check. Mm. Okay. Phoenix, yes. interesting. Phoenix, speak. Huh? Speak. What? Speak. Oh. Yay! Good girl. Yay! Speak again. Speak. Oh. What? Speak. No. Speak. Oh. Yay! Okay. Yay! So again, we just start with these building blocks, oh, and by the time they graduate, she'll understand, oh, when I'm asked to speak, I just continue to speak until I'm asked not to speak mm -hmm. anymore. Amazing. Cool, cool. Well, that is thank wonderful. you so much for sharing the information. Thank you for sharing CCI. Thanks so thank much for having us. Thank you for sharing us. your beautiful oh, girls. Yeah.